Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to true a rim. The process is the same whether it's on a full-size motorcycle, a bicycle, or a Suron. So while this may not be the best video on YouTube, it will serve to give you an idea of the kind of damage that's sustained by the Suron rims after months of hard riding. These rims are notorious for being pretty cheap, so I'm curious to see how out of true they are. After I true the rear rim, I'll be setting it up as tubeless. That will be in a separate video. I haven't touched this rim at all since I got the bike, but just to show you how it's come so far, as these bikes are notorious for having weak wheel sets, that should not be that loose. So that one's a really bad one. That's bad. That's bad. That's extremely bad. That's even worse. <laughs> Those are alright. Those are alright. Those are okay. Bad again. So basically, let's just say over half of the spokes need to be tightened at the very minimum. And I don't know how out of true this rim is yet, but it's safe to assume that it needs some work. So we're going to be doing that before we do the tuba setup. When you're truing a motorcycle tire, I recommend getting a truing stand or a like a wheel balancing stand. All of this was less than $100. I'll post a link in the description. You can do it on your bike. And the way you do that is it's it's a lot it's a lot harder to get like a good reading, especially if you have your tire on there. But you can tie zip ties around your forks or around your trailing arm act as pointers. If this truing stand came with pointers, I probably just would have used that instead of using a dial gauge. But since this is technically a wheel balancing stand from Harbor Freight, there was no good way to install a pointer on here and it was much easier to buy one of these that has a magnetic locking base and just go that way. And it turns out I actually prefer to have an actual like measurement reading and when you spin it you can visualize how the, the, the motorcycle wheel is out of true a little bit easier in my opinion. So the only other thing that you're going to need in order to true your wheel is a spoke wrench. This spoke wrench was very cheap. Um, it came with an assortment of different sizes, but the Suron spoke nip nipples use a 5. I th I'm sure a professional would use a torque wrench to make sure they're getting the proper tension on the spokes, which I would recommend for for like a street legal motorcycle where you need to be really accurate um, and it needs to be safe. But for just any dirt bike, you don't need this truing to be perfect. Um, so I'll be using this and I'll just be going off um, feel and that's perfectly fine. Torque wrenches are pretty expensive and in my opinion they're not necessary. So the first step of this process is to figure out how bad your rim is. A quick overview of the dial gauge is the full travel of this dial gauge is one inch. One tick mark is a thousandth of an inch. Ten tick marks is a hundredth of an, in of an inch. And the full rotation from zero to a hundred is a tenth of an inch. Now, let's give her a spin. So let's see how bad it is. So we started at zero here. I see right there. So we have one peak at 50, 50 thousandths. So we are, we, we, we are a little bit over a full tenth of an inch of run out. And there's a lot of movement in between that, but you know, a little over a, a tenth of an inch, that's really not that bad. So I'm just going to start out by feeling these spokes. And if they're loose, like that guy right there, I'm going to tighten her up by hand a little bit. And give her a couple turns until she's feeling snug. So now that I've got just kind of like a 
base tension on all the spokes. I'm gonna do minor adjustments. After looking at the way this wheel spins, the major jumps on here are from dents in the rim. Right here. So that big jump right there. That's literally from just a dent on the surface of the rim. There's no amount of spoke tightening that's gonna solve that because just the lip of the rim here just hit a rock or who knows what happened. You just gotta hit that pit. But it's damaged. So that's not what we're really looking at. We just wanna know if it's being pulled out of shape one way or the other and it's really not that bad if you ignore all the, the dents in the lip of the rim. If we have um, an issue here, we're gonna loosen these four on the side that has the run out, and we're gonna tighten the four spokes on the other side. And what's that gonna do? Is it's just gonna move that rim over. So I find a little, a little error here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tighten with half turns the side that I wanna pull back from. Now, typically you would loosen these, but since these are already just borderline tight enough, I'm only gonna be tightening the other side, and I'm gonna do that with half turns. This is a very time consuming process here, and it's gonna take me a while to find, I have to do a couple rotations of this thing just to find where I need to, you know, apply some pressure, and then you tighten it, and you do it again, and then you tighten it. Um, and then once you finish your side to side, then you start looking at your up and down. Um, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna work on my side to side here, and then I'll turn the camera back on once I have it where I want it. All right, so I've played around with it a little bit. Like I said, I'm not going for perfection here. This video is mainly just, you know, a little bit of rim maintenance before we go tubeless. Um, I marked at the top here a uh, dent in the rim with blue tape. Um, and that's just not something that you can true out of it, right? So I made sure all the spokes were tight how I wanted it. Then I went around and fiddled with it a little bit. So going back here, um, the goal for me was really just to keep it under a tenth of an inch of run out, which really isn't that much. So that's a full rotation of the dial. Excluding the dent, I've got, um, I've got it down to about um, five hundredths an inch of run out, which is just about half the travel of the dial, give or take. So I'll give you a spin there. Um, so once again, excluding the dent, which is right here, where it jumps all the way over, we're really only seeing about half the travel going through here. Um, maybe even a little bit less than that. So I am not going to mess around with this anymore. I'll show you guys what to do um, for your up and down. But as far as side to side goes, on a dented, beat up rim, it's not very good quality to begin with on a electric dirt bike. That's good enough for me. I've repositioned the gauge to just sit on the inside rim here. And I'm gonna give it a spin. So this is after the side to side run out. All the spokes are as tight as I want. Now I'm looking at it now. And that's, so that's our dent right there. So we're ignoring that jump. That jumps over a little bit. Spin it again. So that's fine. I, I'm not even gonna mess with that. You know, if it was pretty bad, um, I'll show you how to do it in a second, but that's perfectly acceptable. That's not, um, that's not bad enough to justify messing with it anymore. If you already have that dialed in and you just wanna go up or down, instead of dealing with the pairs that go to the same side, you wanna tie in pairs that go to opposite sides. So this one here goes to the disc brake side and this one here goes to the sprocket side. So if I wanted to bring this up right here, I would tighten these the exact same amount. You know, tighten all the loose spokes in the beginning, but you just wanna do one last check. Um, just give, give them all a good squeeze. 
if you get any more movement than what you're seeing here, just with a, you know, like a light squeeze, then you should probably tighten that and then, you know, just make sure it didn't throw anything out of whack if you've already adjusted it. Um, tension wise on here, you know, with such a small wrench like that, there should be a good amount of pressure, you know, like, like that took a, a decent amount just to, you know, make it jump a little bit. Um, so yeah, once you have that good, uh, you're ready to move on to setting your wheel up to go tubeless. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video or, and found it helpful. Please consider hitting that like button if you did, and if you would like to see more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. Keep your eyes out for the next video, which will be on how to set up the Suron rim as tubeless. Thank you, and have a nice day.